In this video, we're going to talk about using curvature map analysis on form bodies in Fusion 360. Hey everyone, this is Matt with Learn Everything About Design, and in this video, we're going to talk a little bit about curvature map analysis in Fusion 360. Now, I've already covered it in a couple of previous videos, and I wanted to just sort of do a video all on its own because I do think it's important that we understand how to use it and when to use it. So if you wanna download this MR2 Fender Flare, I've already provided it in the MR2 video series, but you can go to the description of the video and you can download this over Fender. So what I wanna do is I wanna talk about using curvature map analysis and specifically what I look for when I use things like the Gaussian and the principal maximum. So first I'm gonna turn on the Gaussian and just as a review, this gives us a color bar that talks about uh, green areas being essentially flat, and it has warm colors, things like oranges and yellows, as positive curvature, and cooler colors, things like purples and blues, as negative curvature. The scale is going to dictate where that change in color happens. So as we start to increase this, and as we get higher and higher, you can see we're starting to get more of these colors. Now, in a design like this, it's not as useful to me as some of the other options. And the reason for that is because this design has a lot of changes in curvature. So on the whole, the scale is going to be essentially green, and then we're going to see areas of cool colors or warm colors in areas of extremely high curvature. Things like this back corner here, uh, you can see where we had a lot of transition. You can see that we've got these inflection points where we're going from purple to, to yellow. You can see that we've got a little bit here over the arch, which is good because that's an area that I wanted to highlight. I'm going to just hide the edges. And you can see that we're seeing it here as well. So this is about as far as the usefulness of the Gaussian goes with a design like this for me, because again, there is a lot of changes in curvature. It's not really giving me a ton of information. Another thing that it does give me, however, is I can see that the squared edge that I created inside of here, which was intentional, um, actually does have that change in visual curvature. So you can see where the purple stops. Uh, so that is really helpful there. If we go to the principal minimum, now this one again is, is kind of less helpful for me, but what, essentially what we have is principal minimum is showing that green areas meet the maximum limit that we're setting and red areas exceed it. Now, what is more helpful is the principal maximum. Now, the principal maximum is a little bit flipped. The green is going to meet the minimum limits and the red will exceed it. Why this is helpful is because this allows us to essentially put in a radius of curvature and we can see where the curvature lines are. So this is going to be the most helpful for me in a design like this. And what I like to see is that the areas of detail, for example, the, the line at the top ridge of the fender, the detail line that goes over the fender, and this sort of detail that I have at the back going over this, the fender, that these are all shown in red and that I don't have random red spots popping up all over the design. This one here that's coming from the sill or the side skirt area, this fades away, which was the intention. That area, we want the curvature to be tight where it meets the car, and we want it to fade into the flare. As we increase this number, you can see that we're, we're getting those areas to start connecting. And this is helpful because we might decide that we want to work a little bit more on this area to potentially remove that transition if it's problematic. You can also see that inside of the air intake for this, because again, the, the MR2s are mid-engine, so we are sucking in air either for the intercooler or the intake here, that we actually are showing those stylized detail lines that were intentional. So once again, this is going to be basically the most helpful or the most effective one of these curvature map analysis that I would use on a design like this. They really help identify those creased areas, those, those areas of detail, and whether or not they are showing or highlighting what you want to see. Now, the reason that this is helpful is because that is going to highlight the areas where we have those transitions between light and dark, where we are casting shadows on ourselves. We have this ambient occlusion in this back corner or down here on the side skirt. 
areas of where the reflection would show. Now again, we had that red area here with the curvature map analysis. If I go ahead and turn that back on. That red area with the curvature map that showed up in here, let's go ahead and bring it back. So you can see right in this area, I'm gonna accept that this time and I'm gonna hide it. So right in that area, you can see the way that the reflection changes. If I bring that back, you can see that this area here is going to be something where we might potentially want to make some changes if we're not happy with the way that the light is hitting this design. Now, it was somewhat intentional because I wanted this style line to carry up into the scoop and sort of disappear into the flare. And so I'm not really concerned with the shape there. But again, those are the kinds of things that I would look for when I'm using that curvature map analysis. There are other analysis tools that we have used in the past. So things like zebra analysis, Another great tool, I generally will increase the repeats on this, maybe change the direction. And again, what I'm looking for is I'm looking to see how these lines bounce off of the transition areas, because this is going to essentially help us identify what the reflections are gonna look like. So you can see in this area, once again, if I hide the zebra stripes, you can see how the reflection changes in that area and how the zebra stripes are a telling sign that we're gonna get that. And again, right here over the fender flare, if I hide the zebra stripes, this area, depending on where the light's gonna hit it, is going to be a shiny spot, and the zebra stripes help us identify that based on the way that they're presented in the model. You can also edit the zebra stripes and lock their orientation. When we lock their orientation, that means that they're not going to move around as we rotate the model. I actually find it more helpful to leave them unlocked because that lets me rotate the model and ensure that things like this creased edge here, that the zebra stripes are following that as I rotate it. Same thing with this detail in the back here. I want to make sure that the zebra stripes are following it. One important aspect of zebra stripes is you really want a smooth transition as it goes over different edges. So if I bring the edges back, when we go over this vertical edge, for example, especially when you have curvature involved, you don't want to see the zebra stripes drastically get wider or thinner. Now that does tend to happen in areas of high curvature, like down here in the fender, but uh, if you rotate it around, you really want to pay, pay close attention to what happens. Now these are jumping around a little bit, but as it goes across that line, it's not making a drastic change in shape. And again, you might need to rotate these around, especially if you can get it to an area where you have a T-point then, or a star point, you want to really look at the detail of what's happening to the zebra stripes as it goes across. Turning the number of repeats down and changing the scale oftentimes can, uh, can help identify those. But everything looks pretty good here. Again, this has a lot, a lot of change in curvature. So this is a model that's a little bit harder to, to get something out of zebra stripes. And the curvature map analysis is generally going to be the first look or the first thing that I would go to. So once again, I, I thought it was important just to talk about curvature map analysis and it really in the, co in the context of a design like this, because oftentimes when we use these tools without understanding what it's giving us back, it's not really giving us any useful information. So if you're looking at making a design that has a lot of hard edges, that has a lot of transitions, go to the curvature map analysis, use the principle max and see if you can follow those red lines and see if generally those red lines stick where you want those highlights to be. You can use the other options like Gaussian, especially if you have a lot of broad changes in curvature. But once you start to get a lot of divisions like this and you start to have a lot of detail where you have edges close together, that's the time when the curvature map analysis for Gaussian and principal minimum don't really make as much sense to me. And again, this is just my opinion. This is how I use them, but uh, hopefully that helps. If you have any questions, please let me know. As always, thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.